Hey, black man. I love you. I appreciate you. I adore you. Ain't nothing better than a black man to be in this world. If you're a black man, you're a king. You'll always be a king. Woo wee. <laughs> but damn. There you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you. You far too kind. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. Come on, let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Okay, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? So, man, the Biden administration, they hate when you point this stuff out, right? Now, the other day, with the help of Lizzo, with the help of Queen Latifah, uh, Bill Clinton, uh, Barack Obama, Biden went to New York and raised a record-breaking $26 million fundraising. And it's all over the media. President Biden was joined by former presidents Barack Obama and Bill Clinton at an event last night in New York City. It raised $25 million for Biden's re-election campaign. NPR's Franco Ordonez reports the expensive haul shows Biden's financial advantage in his campaign against former President Donald Trump. The Biden campaign called it the most successful political fundraiser in American history. More than 5,000 people bought tickets to attend the party at Radio City Music Hall in New York. Comedian Mindy Kaling hosted, Lizzo performed. Stephen Colbert, the late night host, moderated a talk with the three presidents. Obama touted Biden's policies and said unlike Trump, he had a positive message to share about America. Clinton talked up Biden's economic moves as well as his efforts to try and work across the aisle on tough issues like the border. OK, good, good. Good for you guys. All right. So now, just the other day, Trump, without no fanfare, without no uh, sizzle, just a stake, he had no celebrities. He didn't have no Stephen Colbert. Just him. Went to Mar-a-Lago and he raised $50 million. Hey, good afternoon, Lexi. Well, like you said, uh, the RNC says that the Trump campaign raked in over $50 million from last night's event alone. It was, uh, you can actually see Mar-a-Lago behind me, one of Trump's estates here in Palm Beach. But the fundraiser was at a private home of a hedge fund billionaire. It was a pretty star-studded event, a lot of big names, some big Republican mega donors. Um, and the Trump team is very pleased with the outcome. They're saying that, you know, Americans want change. They're going to use this money to implement that change. Um, and they also touted how, you know, this uh, last night's fundraiser just had Donald Trump there. And you mentioned a Biden's fundraiser in New York City last week where he had a president, former presidents, Clinton and Obama. So Trump's team is saying, you know, it took three presidents for them to make the $26 million from that. And it just took Trump to make almost double that last night. <laughs> $50 million at a fundraiser. Okay. Again, Biden had all his help. Biden had all his celebrity. He had former presidents, you know, to help him out. You're not really here to see Joe, right? You're here to see Barack. I'm here to see Bar Barry. I love Barry. I'm very excited to see Barack. I'm so excited to see Barack. Of course. Who are you most excited to see tonight? Lizzo's going to be amazing. Leah Michelle. What about Joe Biden? Joe Biden. Who was your favorite president? Joe, Barack, or Bill? Pick. Obama? Not to be weird or anything, but Obama. Bill Clinton is my favorite president. I would love to have a cocktail with Bill. Obama. I'm, I'm really happy to see our first black president. Yeah. Well, Bill Clinton's in there. He claims he's the first black president. And the best he did was $26 million, And it was record-breaking. Uh, and everybody was applauding him for that, you know? His coffers are big. With all that, Trump goes in 
after you try to take $475 million away from him via Letitia James. You took, uh, you try to take $91 million, E. Jean Carroll. You try to send him to jail. What? You try to, um, defame him, tie him up in court. He still went and raised 50 mil. Ta da. So now, Biden sees that he's in trouble, and especially with the young voters. The young voters are stopped listening to him. They're not even voting for him. We see a lot of celebrities are jumping ship. And so now he got to do a Hail Mary pass. So now he goes to old man Bernie Sanders, and he's talking about the, the, the tax, the, the rich are not paying a fair share of tax. The same talking points. Because you are all people that have a lot of money. I know uh, <laughs> 20 of you and you're rich as hell. <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you tax cuts. We're going to pay off our debt. You know, that's everything you need to know about Donald Trump. When he thinks the cameras aren't on, he tells his rich friends, quote, we're going to give you tax cuts. Can anybody in America imagine that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, billionaires are doing phenomenally well, that he's going to give them huge tax breaks. And then at the same time, He's going to cut Social Security and Medicare and programs that our kids need. This is his economic plan? That's what he wants to do? Cutting taxes for his friends? Cutting Social Security for you? That makes me mad as hell, quite frankly. The hypocrisy is just outrageous. This is what he says to his billionaire friends. Not quite what he's saying at his rallies. There are 1,000 billionaires in America, in this country. They pay an average tax rate of 8.2% federal taxes. So I have a plan. We have a plan. Asking his good buddies to begin to pay their fair share. You have one candidate who wants to cut Medicare and Social Security and one who's going to protect it. That's why I'm supporting Joe, and I hope you will as well. Come <laughs> on, oh you guys must think that we're stupid. You're still talking about taxing the rich. You had the whole four years. If you really truly believe that, you could have done that already. You still haven't done that. Now you wait until... The, it's um November's coming up, and here you come bringing out old man Bernie Sanders, the socialist. You bring him out to help you push you along stupid ass talking point again, taxing the rich. Nobody cares about that. We heard about that shit already. We heard that shit for what, 10, 20, 30 years almost. You had four years, you ain't done nothing about it. Obama was in, he ain't do nothing about it because it's just talking point. It's just talk. Now, President Biden saying he wants a tax system where wealthy investors no longer pay marginal rates lower than their secretary. But the latest IRS numbers show the wealthy actually pay not only the highest rates, but the largest share of taxes. The top 1% paid 40.1% of all federal income taxes in 2018. That is the highest share on record and more than twice the share of the 1980s. Their average effective rate. Now, that's what they actually pay when you include all the credits and deductions. That was over 25%. You compare that to middle class, they paid an average tax rate of 7%, and the bottom half of Americans paid 3%. So the top 1% paid an effective rate more than three times higher than the middle class. And we'll see you in November, all right? Whew, Lord have mercy. That's all I got for you guys today. If you got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. See that notification bell. Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. Tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> Go, girl. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you socialists, get off my lawn.